This is Lily Edwards. Straight A student who eventually graduated from Harvard with a degree in electrical engineering and computer science in 2016. She received a brown belt in jiu-jitsu in just one year. Owns a home in New York and Japan and visits Scotland a lot. Big, big, big fan of turtles. Not them, the real kind of turtles. So much so that she helped raise $10,000 for Save the Turtles last summer. Recently had a chance to visit the NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. Her favorite band is Radiohead and she recently went to see her favorite band. We're on the night. Lead singer Tom York gave a shout out to her at a gig in Buffalo, New York and... She doesn't even exist. I made the whole thing up. Even the bit about saving the turtles and stuff and it's all in the it's all in the script thing I'm supposed to read and stuff but you believe me right sure you've seen these images before, or at least seen similar ones like this. But in case you haven't, this is a small crash course. These are all AI generated images from an AI system called DALI. And the way these images are created is very simple indeed. Well, simple to generate, slightly more difficult to explain the process behind it, but I'll save that for later. You simply type in what you want and bingo. Congratulations, you are now the proud owner of Professor Snape working at McDonald's, sort of. Now, I know the elephant in the room is, what's with the nightmare fuel faces and why does it look so warped and twisted? Is it supposed to look like that or did we forget a switch or button or something? I mean, if your job with this video, Dan, was to convince me that we've now got a tool to create something out of nightmares, well then I would say, good job, sir, fine job indeed. But if your job with this video was to scare me into thinking that AI-generated images are somewhat scarily real-life looking, then you have absolutely failed and this f***ing comeback was a waste of my f***ing time and your time. <clears throat> well... Anyway, it's a good thing they released new and improved versions. Now there's a Dolly 2 with a Dolly 3 right on the way. And unlike Dolly, Dolly 2 generates four times the better resolution and a huge improvement in caption matching and photorealism. It was such an improvement that even Cosmopolitan got hold of it and used it to create the world's first AI generated magazine cover. This is Portrait of Edmund de Bellamy. In 2018, it sold at auction at Christie's in New York, located across the road from the famous toy shop, FAO Swartz, where they filmed this iconic scene. And around the block from this five guys in case you get a bit hangry from all that artsy fartsy. Its original estimate before the auction was around $7,000 to $10,000. That estimate, let's just say, was a little off the mark as it sold for a whopping $432,000. Oh yeah, something I should have probably mentioned before. This is an AI generated image. This was the first time Christie's ever auctioned an AI generated painting. Look, you can see its algorithm code right there if you weren't totally convinced. Yes, someone did in fact fork out nearly half a million dollars on this thing. And this isn't the only one you can get. Portrait of Edmund de Bellamy is just one of the many from the generated images collection called La Family de Bellamy. You too can now own the whole AI family collection. Now you're probably thinking, Jeez, this AI art thing is starting to get a little bit weird. Well, I got one more thing to show you. Hey guys, remember Lily from earlier? From like a couple of minutes ago? Well, yeah, I made a whole backstory up, so apologies for that, no more games. Lily here is quite remarkably an AI generated image. This looks real, this looks like a person. 
now that we've had some time to explain a few things, let's play a little quiz to see how good you are at identifying real from fake. Here are six more faces. Now, can you tell me which ones are AI generated? You have five seconds. Time's up. So the thing is, guys, and by this point of the video, you shouldn't have trusted me. There's this website called thispersondoesnotexist.com where quite simply, you log on to reveal a lifelike AI generated face. And with just the hit of the refresh button, it generates a new AI created face. This isn't just a few faces at random that are put in a loop. This is literally endless faces generated within seconds. So the answer to the quiz is, well, none of them are real. So how the hell does this all work? Well, it's quite simple to understand in most cases. Let's take the last example for instance, this person does not exist.com. The images are generated using a machine learning theory called GAN. GAN was created way back in 2014 when the creators wanted to see if it was possible to create artificial faces by using a data set of real faces. In other words, creating an AI generated human face from a bunch of actual human pictures. This is where StyleGAN came in. It introduced significant modifications to the original GAN generator model. And this was all developed by NVIDIA, one of the leaders in graphic processing. But the best way to tell you how it works is to show you this. So the top of the screen, these five photos are our bank of photos. These are our real life photos that we'll be using to get the machine to learn how to create a unique face. But it's also using the photos on the left hand side here. And this is how StyleGAN works its magic. It's technically using both photos, or at least one of them, to combine with the other one to change the style of the person. You can see from this image how it's combining both the photos in order to create a unique one but the photos on the left are technically used for the style. You can see in the top row here, this woman has black hair. So does everyone else. Combining the photo of the child with the woman with black hair creates a child with black hair. The possibilities with this are absolutely endless. The AI could store that unique photo and use that as a source to create even more unique photos. Dali uses images acquired from the internet, so basically it's using that as its starting data set and then generating a unique image based on the text prompt that you feed it. Which in all honesty makes Dali a very powerful tool as there are options there. Rather than just creating a face from a bunch of faces, you can apply an action or a certain expression in the picture. But what you will notice with Dali is a lack of people's faces or at least realistic looking ones if this person does not exist is the Facebook profile photo generator, then Dali is the art generator. Now, before I go ahead with what I'm about to say, this AI is using existing data from the internet that includes the good and bad side of the internet. The reason for the lack of accurate faces, especially in earlier versions, is when they try to generate human faces or prompts regarding humans, it tended to generate white men for its prompts by default, also favoring them for high paid job prompts. Whenever a prompt was done for a woman, it tended to over sexualize their images. And Dolly was also going really hard when applying stereotypes, which I guess says a lot about the world today. So there are some limitations with the AI as of right now, with most AI image generators, the last thing the people and companies behind these things want is generators that generate the ugly side of the internet and society itself. Here's a quote on Dolly's website after the release of Dolly 2. Our hope is that Dolly 2 will empower people to express themselves creatively. Dolly 2 also helps us understand how advanced AI systems see and understand our world, which is critical to our mission of creating AI that benefits humanity, which is great and all. 
but this goes far beyond just generating pictures. Funding for AI and AI research has grown massively over the last few years. More and more people are starting to realize the benefits of having something created for you with the press of a button. Whether it's been to see how they can take on the art world and sell AI generated images, it's been done already. Whether it's been to see if AI could create its own original music, or having an AI that has signed a record deal with a music label, it's been done already. Whether it's been aiding people to automatically write papers and essays, it's been done already. Whether it's been generating realistic looking faces and images, it's been done already. Whether it's been creating deepfakes and having a face replaced with another face and even their own voice replaced with another voice, it's been done already. But what's been a very common theme here, and what I would say in order for a lot of these AI generated programs to work, they need what is currently out there, so to speak. They rely on data and information that humans have made over the years. And all that data is, of course, on the internet, which in this case has nearly everything on it. But what scares me most about this is that it's only going to be improved over time. I get that some AI can be used for good, and that's been heavily promoted throughout these AIs. There's a lot more I haven't shown today, but nearly all of them have said they're doing it carefully. This is a little bit off piece, but a lot of this reminds me of the scene in Blade Runner 2049. A very incredible scene. There's a scene with an AI hologram character called Joy. She is in love, in quotations, or she at least is programmed to love her owner, in this case a guy called Kay. Because of this, they both want to physically touch each other, but obviously they can't, because she's not real. So she syncs up with an actual real person in order to do this, blends into the human. It's not perfect, but you can still see both characters in a way. But at times you can't tell which part of the face is who. With the scene ending in an advert for Joy saying she can be anything you want her to be. It's an incredibly powerful but dark and disturbing scene in my eyes. I just found it of some relevance with the video today. But moving into something for example like the arts is a form of human output. A form of human emotion in some cases. I think having AI doing it destroys that idea. Wouldn't you want to have an art piece or any kind of form of art or an idea that came out of someone directly like someone like you and me? With the thought of it coming from an AI program that's analyzed thousands upon thousands of other art pieces, devalue that art piece? It's a big question, I know, and I never thought I'd be asking it in 2022. But technology has moved so fast in the past 20 years, it's staggering to think what it will be like in 20 years time. And I suppose the question is, how far can this thing go? How much more advanced will it get? What other forms of machine learning will come of this? And the big question is, as humans, are we ready for it? Because the truth is, it's coming.